Moses and the Exodus are the core story of the Israelites. But before discussing that period of time, we should refer to the Merneptah Stella that dates to the year 1207 BC, where Merneptah writes that he's been to the land of Canaan, he's been to Eshkelon, and the Israelites are laid waste, their seed is not. And there came a time when a new Pharaoh arose, and he feared the Israelites, and he enslaved them. And that Pharaoh, many people believe, is Ramses the Great. And here is his mummy. And Ramses the Great orders the death of the Israelite baby boys. But the Pharaoh's daughter finds a little baby Israelite boy floating in the Nile. And she saves him. And she names him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. It's quite probable that Moses received the finest education available in Egypt at his time. And here we have two math problems that Moses might have solved. The first concerns the number of bricks to build a ramp, and the second concerns how to calculate the volume of a truncated pyramid. Moses is raised in the Pharaoh's household, but yet he does not forget his relationship to his ancestors. One day, he's walking in around the palace and he sees a slave driver beating Hebrews. And Moses is so outraged that he struck and killed the Egyptian overseer. And here we have a wall painting of exactly that type of situation where the Egyptian overseers with whips in hands are supervising slaves. After slaying the Egyptian overseer, Moses flees to Midian, where he marries Sipporah and has a son. And one day, God appears to Moses in the form of the burning bush, and he instructs Moses to return to the Pharaoh to seek the release of the Israelites. So Moses returns to Egypt and confronts the Pharaoh and says to him, let my people go. The Pharaoh is outraged by Moses' request. He makes the life of the Israelites more difficult. He instructs his overseers not to supply straw to the Israelite slaves who are making bricks, yet they must make their own quotas. Here we have an incredible papyrus from the time of Moses and it says that there is neither men nor straw to make bricks and we also have this wonderful tomb painting where the men are making bricks. Furthermore we have another scroll from the time of Moses where it is discusses a quota and the people fail to meet their quotas. Subsequently, God brings ten plagues against the Egyptians for failing to allow the Israelites to leave. And here we have a frog scarab found outside the walls of Jerusalem dated to about 250 years after the Exodus. And the frog represents the second plague of the ten plagues. And even today in Egypt there are locusts, which is the eighth of the ten plagues. The tenth and final plague is the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians. And God instructs the Israelites to slay a lamb and to put the blood on the doorpost of their home and to eat unleavened bread so that the angel of death will pass over their homes and strike the Egyptians. And this is the origin of the Passover. After the angel of death slew the Egyptian children, the Egyptians were anxious for the Israelites to leave. And the Israelites gathered up their dough, and their bread was not leavened. And here we have bread actually from a hundred years before the exodus from the tomb of Ka. And his bread is on display in Turin, Italy. Similarly, 
we have a tomb box that was shows Egyptians making bread nearly 800 years before the Exodus. In Exodus 12 verses 17 and 18, we are told to celebrate the Feast of the Unleavened Bread from the night of the 14th day of Nisan to the conclusion of the 21st day at evening. And here we have it. 800 years after the Exodus, the Jewish people living on the island of Elphantine in the Nile River, close to what the city of Aswan is today, they are celebrating the Passover of the Judaite garrison. And for the very same days as was articulated in the Bible. We learn in Numbers 33 verses 5 to 7 that the fleeing Israelites encamped at Migdal. Migdal was a fortress town on the route of Horus that led into Canaan. And we have a papyrus from the very time of the Exodus where slaves have been seen near Migdal. In Exodus 14, verse 23, we learn that the Pharaoh decides to pursue the Israelites. And we actually have an image of Ramses the Great in his chariot.